Welcome back everybody, video five on loading for the seven millimeter PRC. Today's video is gonna focus on this Hammer Hunter tip 162 grain bullet featuring four different gunpowders, two of which we've already shot with it previously, just looking for velocity and pressure testing. We didn't shoot any groups. Today we're actually gonna shoot some small, small ladders. We're gonna load Hodgdon Rotumbo, Vitavori N565, Vitavori N560, and Hodgen H1000 using BR2 primers in our now four times fired Peterson brass. The hammer bullets, I love them. I like the drive bands on them, the parabolic drag reducing or reduction scallops or drive bands. I like the way they fly. I like the way they load. They seat very easy. I wasn't originally going to bring N560 into this, but a couple of people had recommended it to me in this bullet weight, particularly with this hammer bullet. And so taking their advice, I went ahead and ran some data and looked at the numbers and I, I loaded sort of medium on the warm side, but they're not real hot. Everything here is gonna be seated to the same cartridge-based ogive length of 2.647 on my comparator tool. That gives me right around 35, 36 thousandths jump depending on how good I took my measurements when I checked my seating depth. It is alleged that these bullets like to jump a lot and that you are not to jump them anything less than 20,000. What I'm hoping to get out of today, I want to get these going faster than I did the last time I shot them. I did, however, have one that was pretty hot last time with H1000. At 71 grains of H1000, we got this bullet going 3126 last time. I'd like to see it go over that, Ideally, I'd like to see 3,200 feet per second, but I know that that's probably a pipe dream at this point. I just want to get a little hotter than that 3,126. Putting those numbers together, making good bone crushing energy, and the fact that it's a monolithic bullet may make it the ultimate contender for this moose hunt, which is what this whole entire series is designed around. We'll go through some minor brass prep, but we're not going to do every single step. This brass has been fantastic, hasn't let me down. I gauge the primer pockets no change. Everything else just seems to be just right. They come out of the rifle at 1.888 and I bump them back to 1.8855. Two and a half thousandths is when I'm bumping my shoulder. It's been very consistent and easy to get. This brass anneals well. Not a whole lot to talk about on that. I am still using a mandrel. Um, I'm going to continue that to set the necks out or set the neck tension. So in other words, when I'm full length sizing this brass, we're crushing it down to a 310 exterior on the neck and then putting a 282 mandrel down in it afterward to open that up to 282 so that then we only have 2000s holding force or interference neck tension on our bullet. But enough of all that. Here's today's workup and then we'll get on to brass prep and loading. So getting them sized. One point eight eight five five. There we go. Been real consistent, just like normal. Nothing new to report on brass, aside from I ran out of one shot. So I'm using Imperial uh, Sizing Wax here. Really like the stuff. It just it gums up your dye a little more than uh, the one shot spray does. That's good. Real consistent shoulder bump. I'm pretty happy with that. This brass has been behaving really well. I had no problems with it so far. I'm surprised because I've run it really hot a couple times now. I don't really want to do that a whole lot more. I want to find the uh, load that's accurate just below pressure here in the 162 and call it quits on running these hot. I'd like these to make it all the way to September. So we've got a known quantity when we go to load for hunting. And there it is again. So we're setting for our neck tension. Got a mandrel in here that's uh, 282. 
It's a TIN coated uh, mandrel, and these are a dry lube this time because I didn't have any one shot, so there was no overspray going in the neck. So I figured better safe than sorry. I don't want to crush anything down. So I take my time on this first stroke, and then I make two additional strokes nice and rapid, make sure it's good and even in there. Everybody's got their own style for this. This is mine. If you think I'm wrecking my brass, let me know. I haven't had a problem so far. This brass has been really good to me. Very surprised that it's stood up to what it's been put through. Got a small amount of trimming to do this time. Get them down to uh, 2.715-ish, somewhere in there. They grew a thousandth or so. A couple of them grew a couple thousandths. There we go. And that's looking good. Been pretty consistent. That's our shortest, so that's what we're running with here. Got a couple longer that I got to redo there. Not the best tool on the planet to use for this, but it is faster than doing it with my old hand trimmer. So that's how I'm doing it. Here we're working with H1000. Nothing interesting to report. These are really full case of 71.7 grains. Working on Rotumbo now. N565 now. Nothing special here, just slightly larger extruded powder. So tough to get your numbers. Looks like we did okay just now. Now an N560, another large extruded uh, powder. You can tell by that bottle, this one's uh, 2019 vintage, I believe. Just opened it today. It might be a minute before we get the machine dialed in here. I set the speed settings best I could quickly. Okay, nothing left to do here, but take them to the range, make them fly straight. A thing to touch on real quick before sending these rounds down range is the necessity to have a completely clean bore before starting on solid monolithic copper bullets. You don't want to have any residual copper following in your bore from soft jacketed cup and core bullets when you start into shooting your solid copper monolithics. What happens with the monolithic bullets is they can experience accelerated copper fouling if they're introduced to a barrel with existing fouling from those lead cup and core bullets. You can degrade your accuracy. It's best to get it down to squeaky clean before you start out. Here's some footage of this barrel. Granted, it has some horrible looking machining in it. I understand that. You see some tooling chatter. You see some striations in the grooves themselves. Not a real good looking barrel but I've got it down to bare steel, super clean. This is the condition you need it in if you're gonna start into monolithics. Okay, right at the range, standard procedure. We've got our target at 100 yards, shot marker system up and running, and a live target cam.
Okay, well, obviously nothing to brag about here. Those are some ugly targets. Had one loading that worked out well. The 70.8 grains of H1000 gave us 3,195 feet per second. SD is 7.1. ES is 17.3 and a 0.6 inch group. I was shocked to see it at 3,195 feet per second. I honestly did not think we would get there, and I would actually settle for much less. At 71.1 grains, it opened up uh, to a big group, and I didn't shoot 71.4 or 71.7 grains of H1000 because I started to get a heavy bolt lift at 71.1, so I cut it off right there. I also did not shoot the highest uh, charge in Rotumbo, or the two highest charge weights in N565 because in the loads under those, I got heavy bolt lifts. So I cut those off right where they were. N560 is the only loading that I shot all four of. And I wasn't loaded hot enough, but I think that I'm probably pretty close. And it looks to me like you'll never match the velocity of H1000 with N560, at least in my setup. So seeing these results, a guy could get discouraged and say, you know what, why would you even stick with that bullet? I don't think the bullet's a problem here. I think it's my loading regime, at least for this type of bullet in this particular rifle. I'm not sure I have my seating depth uh, where it needs to be, but I'm not going to explore that just yet. I think what I'm first going to do with these remaining 20 bullets that I have here is I'm going to load H1000 in a small ladder under 70.8 grains to see if there's a sweet spot or an accuracy node under what we shot here as our best load. So that's it for this video. Not a whole lot of good came from this other than finding that we can get it going screaming hot. Now I've got to find a way to make it accurate. Will it work out? It's anybody's guess. I'm not quite sure that this bullet is the right one for the job versus what we have going on with that Burger 195. I've got that thing to shoot bug holes multiple times. I like the way it shoots. We've got it going screaming fast. It'll hit like a truck at its weight and that velocity. It'll be hard to peel me away from it. Yet, if we find a loading in this 162 grain hammer hunter, particularly with this little research I'm going to do in H1000, we find one that's going this fast and makes nice tidy groups, it might end up being the one. The follow through capability for the shank of a monolithic solid copper bullet is unmatched really. There really isn't anything out there that's going to do it quite like that. Do you really need it? Probably not. Moose have been killed with 30-30 lever action rifles for 100 years more than 100 years, but that shank of that solid copper monolithic passing through bone could be vitally important. If you get a bull moose that's facing you quartered on or facing straight on, you're going to end up shooting through bone. These are considerations for me. I say that to say I'm not quitting on the 162 grain hammer hunter. Going to give her another shot here. Got 20 bullets left. The worst thing I can do is say, yeah, we're going to move on. So thanks for coming by, everybody. I appreciate you being here. There will be obviously more videos in this series. I hope to catch you in the next video, and until then, take care and shoot straight.